Good afternoon. I'm Mark Allen from Gaper.io, and I'm today here with Will Cohen from somewhere out there in space. Uh, he's the founder and CEO of TopCorp. Good afternoon, Will. Good afternoon, Mark. How you doing? I'm great. I'm uh, I'm in space, so <laughs> I'm I'm uh, far and away from from what's going on on Earth. Luckily, you're you're probably the safest person I know right now. <laughs> so. <laughs> So now that we get started, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Absolutely. Uh, my specialty has been for the last um, 14 years in retail marketing, specifically uh, digital. And um, I spent the last uh, eight years working for the uh, agency of record for walmart.com as mm -hmm. well as eBay. And I was VP of mobile. Um, so uh, my job was to come up with new and innovative products for brands such as Walmart, um, and, and advertisers um, that they can sponsor and um, create interactivity on the Walmart platform. So uh, that was um, a role that I was at for about seven and a half years. And then I later uh, went on to uh, a similar role at a company, Playwire Media, uh, where I was uh, working with retailers, but more in the gaming and entertainment space. Hmm. So that was uh, pretty much all I know is, is the retail uh, digital world. Very cool. Yeah, very, and as you know, very popular out here in the Bay Area. Yes, very much. Yeah. So uh, what has been your experience with remote employment, both as a remote employee and a remote employer? Well, um, and I know I'm sure we'll get into it. Everything's uh, definitely taken that approach now. Um, but I was uh, remote for quite some time uh, with our startup. Um, we are you know, kind of scattered all over the place on the East Coast, West Coast. So uh, we found that it's an essential thing, especially for companies like us um, that need to, you know, scale as much as possible and not have as much overhead. Um, remote employment's definitely been a necessity. So what is your, has been your experience in general with remote? For, let's just start with uh, Top Corp. Sure. Um, for the most part, um, very, very positive. Um, we uh, still are able to have team meetings via Zoom and, and, and um, interactive uh, methods such as this. Um, and most of what we do can be conducted you know, from remote locations anyway. Uh, we always like to, at some point in the quarter, sync up and have in-person meetings because it keeps that interactivity and human connection, but um, very positive experiences so far on the remote employment side. Yeah, and I know you said you're in Southern Florida now. We're um, you're actually not in outer space. <laughs> so, can you <laughs> yeah. tell us where your where your corporate headquarters is? If there is a corporate headquarters? Yeah, I, uh, unfortunately, I really am um, on Earth now, and um, <laughs> uh, we are we are actually based in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, I'm currently in Florida. Um, I came down here. Uh, I have friends and family down here during the um, you know the, the COVID nineteen crisis, uh, but we are based in New York City and we also have an office and employers, uh, and, I'm sorry, employees in Florida as well as on the West Coast in Seattle. Oh, very, wow. So two of the bigger hit cities. Yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting. So what do you think is the future of remote employment and, and what do you think needs to be done differently to make it even more effective? Well, um, we're learning, um, I think now uh, that these conference calls are great. Um, I think that from uh, a technology perspective, we need more ways to do virtual meetings. Um, it really cuts overhead. Travel costs obviously are, are, are very burdensome, burdensome, burdensome to uh, yeah, a lot of our uh, fellow startups and, and smaller businesses. But um, from a, a company perspective, I think we need to um, invest more in software and uh, things like that that can kind of, um, you know, enable us to connect better with each other across across the globe really because it really is an international world and we don't need to travel anywhere to work with each other yeah and i i'm hearing that more and more from different people is uh i, I don't know if that's good for the airline industry i think people are going to take more vacations or since you can work from home you might say hey i think i'll go to san diego and work this week <laughs> absolutely um i mean it's it's much more efficient to be honest uh, a lot of we're learning this now but a lot of the meetings that we thought had it uh, take place in person could be done remotely and uh, via virtual. So uh, I think it, it definitely helps with efficiencies. Yeah, I agree. So, so what's the story behind Top Corp and what's your journey been like so far? Sure. 
It's been interesting. Um, I started this about three years ago, but we really got going the last six to eight months um, where we had our platform built. And what we do is um, learning from my past with Walmart and, and those CPG brands, as well as entertainment um, advertisers, we knew that engagement was a, a, a very high um, high on their, their KPIs. And first party data is also one of the main things that advertisers are looking for. So what we did here is we built a platform where brands can license our technology and they can run things like live voting on broadcast TV, uh, voting on the next flavor of their product launch, uh, competing to be the face of their brand and be you know, featured on a, a catalog. And our platform li literally can live anywhere, um, any marketing channel, TV, online, um, within their application. And um, it's been exciting. Um, the, the great part about doing what we're doing is, you know, there's never a time where we can't think of a, an amazing idea. Um, you know, the, the challenges, obviously, just like any small business and startup, uh, you know, the, there's always uh, a lot more work than you have the uh, ability to do. And so you're, you know, you're always working, but um, it's, it's been very exciting and, and definitely a, a fun journey so far. Well, that's great. So, so um, how did you incorporate the idea of remote in your company? Since I mean, you're a fairly new company, so it's probably been there since day one, I would assume. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we only opened up a, a shared workspace within the last few months. Um, mm -hmm. Up until this year, everything has been remote. Um, and the only reason we did that is because um, we were part of um, an accelerator program, a startup accelerator program. And um, they actually enabled us to have an office and then we expanded a bit, um, in South Florida, in the Florida area. And, um, you know, we needed a place just where we could collaborate if needed. Um, but for the most part, for, I'd say 90% of our history, we've been, we've been remote. That's great. So you're, you're obviously a, a veteran of this, but a lot of companies have been forced to go remote over the last two weeks. And, and what do you think are the major roadblocks and challenges that they're facing? Wow. Um, I would say, to be honest, things like morale, um, I think it does help to have that human connection in certain times during certain uh, periods like these, these times that we're in. And sometimes it does help to uh, have that, that human uh, interaction. Um, I think keeping the team engaged and excited, it, it could be an issue. Um, obviously, having FaceTimes like this is, is helpful. But I, I also think there's a lot of businesses that aren't used to this. I know uh, firsthand companies that um, being remote is a complete new concept to them. And they're now learning how do we check in with our team every day or week? Um, you know, how do we make sure everybody's staying on top of everything and, and keeping the spirit high? And, and you know, for us, we were made for this. But there's definitely large, large companies that, that haven't experienced this before. Oh yeah, I, I agree with you, and it, it's it's amazing to see. I mean, I'll just use the U.S. The U.S. is pretty much flipped overnight. Absolutely, and yeah. it's going to be really interesting to see what happens when this is all over. Because I, I think now that people are getting a little taste of this, it, it's exactly. a different quality of life, and I think they're going to want it more. Exactly, I I know firsthand some of our clients that have said those exact words. They said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't really allow remote work uh, prior. And now it's like, hmm, this isn't that bad. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely think this has uh, been a catalyst for, for more uh, remote, remote work uh, moving forward. Yeah, and, and, and tell me what you think on this. Um, I, there's two types of people when it comes to remote workers. There's people like myself, my youngest kid is 30. So. Mm -hmm. I have no children at home, so it's easy for me to work from home. But then there's this, if you have a kid under five, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. If you have a teen, starting when they get to be about teenagers, I think it gets a little bit easier because I don't want to deal with you anyway. So do you think, it, do you think it's going to come down to the, you know, the groups that want to work from home, the groups that don't? Yeah, and um, it's a funny scenario because I, I know people in that situation where they were, you know, forced into <laughs> remote work. Um, and, you know, there's, there's people that have young children at home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little tougher for them. Uh, I, I think that moving forward, once things get a little bit um, mm -hmm. more figured out, it won't be as, as uh, cumbersome as it might be right now. But, but, but yeah, I, I, do, I see that some people might be 
forced into this because, you know, companies are going to say, wow, you know, we cut costs X percent now by not having this overhead. Um, but I think it will, it will just like anything adapt and yeah, you know, figure it out. I think, yeah, I think people when forced generally adapt. Absolutely. So, so there's companies like Gaper that help develop, build and scale products, especially for startups. How important do you think this is going to be going forward? especially for a startup like yourself that I'm assuming you need to hire quality people because of what you do with Absolutely. certain skill sets and quickly. Absolutely. Um, tremendous help. Um, those types of uh, companies like such as Gaper are the companies that we depend on um, as a, as a small business, as a startup um, to help us scale, to keep us with as low overhead as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I absolutely think those are one of the necessities of, of you know, keep, keeping this going. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, and I'm hearing a lot of that. We, we definitely are busier in, in the last two weeks. We're getting more interest. Uh, yeah. And I think the other thing that companies like Gaper and you know, other companies, there's competitors, obviously, mm -hmm. that we bring is we have the experience um, in what it takes to build a remote team. And, and I mean, you obviously do too since you've done it. I think that's the bigger gap right now, right? It's like, how do, you, how do you go from, I haven't done anything, like all of a sudden now I've got this group over here. Exactly. Overnight. That I have no idea. I mean, do I work their hours? Do they work my hours? Or how do we do communication? All that stuff. And, and there's a lot of stuff that's already in place for that. So. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I see this, you know, once, once things kind of come down a bit as more of a gradual process. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also dealt with companies that do it in shifts where, um, incrementally, they'll have certain employees, you know, gradually mm -hmm. work from home, uh, work remotely, and then um, they, they toggle and, and, and rotate in that sense. Um, like you said, this has been extenuating circumstances where everybody just completely does a 180 overnight and goes mm -hmm. from brick and mortar to, you know, remote. So. Yeah, I actually think when it's all said, you know, the first day, everyone's going to be glad to get into the office. Yeah. Um, that next Tuesday, it's like, yeah, I, I really I, have to come in today. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, that maybe the very first time you get to see people again, you know, in person will be a breath of fresh air, but uh, you know, there's always those, those, those adages of people, you know, loving to work from home and so yeah. I'm sure we'll go back to that eventually. Yeah. Like I said, on that too, just like, Oh, I got to deal with that traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it, that's another, another uh, positive. You, you, there's no traffic where we're at. So. Right. Same here. <laughs> It's just amazing in San Francisco, right? I just wish there was something I could go to because there's no traffic. <laughs> exactly. Unfortunately, yeah, not not at this time, but but uh, I'm I'm you know confident that you know think things will you know eventually when they come down, um, companies are going to figure out how does this work for them uh, moving forward and um, you know start creating more uh, you know guidelines and and opportunities for remote employment. Yeah, I agree. So, well, Will, thank you very much. This has been great. Great talking to you today. Um, I wish Top Corp all the luck in the world, and uh, hopefully you, you get back home to New York soon. Thank you. I uh, will take my spaceship when I'm ready. Okay, thanks. Have a good night. <laughs> thank you.